<coughs> Hello, everybody! It's Saturday Night Live! Who's with us tonight? Who is joining us on Saturday Night Live? At more 8 than ish. Who is here tonight? Am I all by myself? I can't be all by myself. Somebody's with me. Simone! Adele! Adele! How are you in Dazzle this Saturday night? Good to have you here. Welcome to the program. Hope all is well in Michigan. Hope all is really very good in Michigan. I guess it's Simon and Allison that are with us tonight, too. Great to have everybody here. Well, I'm glad Dazzle and you are here. I'm always glad for you and Dazzle. The other morning when I got down to the edge of my driveway, you know, because I've been out early, uh, the neighborhood cat was standing there, staring there, looking at me at the bottom of our driveway. Hey, kitty, great to have you here on Saturday Night Live. Good to have everybody here. It is, it is nice cooler weather. I warned the wedding party about the cooler weather. Weather. They didn't mind the cold. They're actually headed the honeymoon, Adele, is in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. The Upper Peninsula is where they're headed for the honeymoon tomorrow. Hey, Carrie, great to have you here. I hope all is well with you. So wonderful to have you here tonight. Do, 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 do. I love everybody that's joining us tonight on this uh, Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live, people. It is a good night. Hey, Krita, great to have you here. We are more eight than ish, and I think that I've been more eight than ish the last couple of nights of screwing everybody up. Everybody thinks they have that more time when I'm on time <laughs> all of a sudden. Uh, tell me what we're grateful for this Saturday night. What are you grateful for? Hey, Sage, cheers to you. Welcome to the program. What is happening today? Tell me what you are grateful for. It has been determined I can't order a hamburger. And I know that sounds crazy, but, you know, every time we try to order out, take out burgers, uh, you know, gourmet burgers, uh, it ends out being not uh, not good, not the way we planned. Tonight we got Vicki Taylor's order. So Vicki Taylor, thank you. We enjoyed the shrimp and the eggplant fries. I think we're good. I didn't get an eggplant fried. I got some sweet potato fries, but I didn't get any of the eggplant fries. But every time we order a burger, something goes wrong. Um, typically, one of the big things uh, is that... Uh, they violate my good kosher grandma's on the shoulder thing and they throw bacon on it. Carrie, that is awesome! Woo! Let's do the happy dance for Carrie. Happy dance. Woo, 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 woo. Go, Carrie. Go, Carrie. Yeah. Following the words of Julie. Keep on applying. Keep on knocking on those doors for grants. There is grants out there. I am so happy for you, Carrie. I want to give you a hug and dance with you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, Jennifer, great to have you here tonight. But my burger order tonight went really, we got a turkey burger. We got the eggplant fries, which were fine. Not the same as the, not, not what I ordered. And they even had a slip that Vicki Taylor's ordered a Honda Pilot. They'll be picking this up. I was not in a Honda Pilot, and I do not look like Vicki Taylor. I am so, so beyond thrilled for you, Carrie. But 
Take the lessons from Carrie. Don't stop applying for these things. They're out there. And grants, you do not have to pay back grants. The, the caveat with a grant, and it's really not much of a caveat, and especially in a year like this, is most grants have a, are taxable income. Okay, So you'll get a 1099 in January for this grant. Um, but you have to have income for it to be taxable. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Stick that in the back of your head so you don't freak out on me in January when you get a 1099, Carrie, for this grant. But it's not a big deal because, again, even if you, even if you subtract the tax from it, so, you know, whatever the, whatever the taxable part is of it, so, you know, if it was a $10,000 grant, let's say, just for simple math, if it was a $10,000 grant and you had $1,000 in taxes on it, um, which I don't think you'll have this year, but if you had $1,000 in taxes in it, you'd still be up $9,000. So, um, but just don't freak out on me in January when they send you a 1099. Because that's what I, I can already predict. I'm going to refer people back to this video and other ones where I've talked about it. Um, because I've said it all along, grants are awesome, but there can be a taxable component to them. Um, there are some that are not. But I am so thrilled for you, Carrie. I mean, I'm truly... But that's what you need to be doing. You need to be working on these things. They're out there, people. There are local ones. There are town ones. There are chamber ones. There are Main Street ones in your town, city, state. Um... You know, I know people that got some of the other, the red, red backpack ones and some of the others, you know, they're out there. It, yes, it's work, but this is money you don't have to pay back. And doesn't that feel better? Doesn't that make get putting your head on the pillow tonight better? Okay. You know, as I talk to these morons in Washington, one of the things I talk about all the time uh, um, yes, exactly, Carrie. Keep on applying. Keep on applying. These cities and towns are given tons of money. Specifically for these types of things. So keep on applying. Keep on doing it. Keep on knocking on doors. Don't give up. You gotta have faith. Don't give up. But, you know, and it makes you sleep better at night. And that's one of the things that I, that, I, uh, that I talk about when I'm talking to these morons in Washington and even at the state level is you don't understand what it's like to be a business owner, okay, and have other people um, that you're directly responsible for, okay, that you know, like, and trust. You know, as a, as a legislator... As a legislator at the city, county, state, federal level, you have this peripheral, I'm responsible for the town of, I'm responsible for the state of, I'm responsible for my district. It's different in a small business. In a small business, you're responsible for Susie, Sally, Jim. Okay? It is different. Okay? You are, you are, these are people you know. You know all the people you're responsible for. In, in government, it becomes this peripheral that I'm responsible for these people. And you, 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 there's a disconnect. But in small business, there's not that disconnect. There is not that disconnect. You know exactly who you're responsible for. You know their families. You know their children. You know their parents. You know exactly who you're responsible for. And uh, we take that seriously as business owners, and I impart that all the time. Well, I can't come up with much better good news than what Carrie's got here. So, I mean, that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. And you know what today is, folks? Today, okay, is not only week 28 or 29 that you've survived. Week 28 or 29 that you have survived. You, you, you have done it. You have gotten up every day. You have lifted your head high. You, you have done it. And I am so very proud of you. Okay, but today is also, today is also 
You have tuned in live, okay? Some of you are going to catch this on replay, and if you're watching the replay, it is not live. Let me just clarify. If you're watching the replay, it is not live. A replay by its very nature is not live. But you, you are watching episode number 200 of this. 200! We've been on 200 nights, folks. 200 nights we have been on together. Here, together. Okay, well... Sometimes down over there, because I've had, this is studio number three. <laughs> but uh, 200 episodes we have done of this, where we have talked about what you are grateful for, what is good in your world, what is happening in the rest of the world. We have done this for 200 episodes so far and counting. This says not the end, but uh, 200 episodes, people. Uh, it, it is... Whoa. Yeah, I, you know... Hey, Sylvia, great to have you here. You know, it's kind of funny. We had 100 right around my mother's birthday back in June. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when we were looking at it the other day, I'm like... Holy moly, it's been 200 um, this weekend. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we started going straight. We have been straight. We had some episodes before March 17th where I was live, where I was driving, where I was, uh, you know, at a store, or I was doing something, and we were talking about these, ish you know, potential issues as things were reverberating around the country and around the world. But... Uh, here we are at episode 200, and that's because of you guys. I'm only here because you guys want me here. When you guys want me not here, I will not be here. Okay, I promise you that. I, I am here. I, I am here because you want me here, and that's it, okay? I, I can find something else to do. It was nice that we got to eat our dinner that we didn't order tonight. I left a better tip for those people, too. <laughs> I, I, versus Va, what Valerie, Val, we got Valerie's order, but I, I left a better tip than Valerie did. Uh, and Valerie ordered a lot more, but, uh, food, but, uh, you know. Well, I'm sorry, Sylvie, to hear that your husband has COVID. I, I remember meeting your husband. Did I meet him in, uh, Columbus? I remember meeting your husband. I don't remember where. I know I know your daughter, but I definitely remember because I've seen her at multiple ones. Um, but I know I met your husband um, at one conference. Um, but, but our thoughts and prayers are with you, and hopefully he is only hope having mild symptoms, Sylvia. Uh, and we hope he is okay. Um, he's a nice guy. I do remember... Uh, there's so few guys that show up at conference, nothing personal. There's a few more of us now than there used to be, but, there, but there's only a few, few guys that show up, so they, they stand out. Even if they just show up to dinner one night uh, or sweet treats or something, it, it is always nice to, to see. So, hey, I do remember them. There's not a lot that I remember right on up here, Sylvia, so, you know, the, I got a lot going on, but... Uh, I really do hope he's going well. I hope your spirits are well and your husband. Um, you know, and I hope his symptoms are uh, mild. But it is real. And, and that's one of the things that the virus is real. It's one of the things as the president has gotten it and for as protected as he is, um, he has gotten it this week. Um, you know, there's a lot of there, it doesn't matter who you are, what position you are, anyone can get it. We just have to do all we can to keep uh, everybody safe. Well, I'm sorry on that. Staffing is tough. The, the thing I would encourage, you know, from a store perspective, Sylvia, is, you know, using the limited resources you have right now with staff. And staff, it, human capital is a limited resource. So I look at, at, at that human capital that you have. I would, I would use that um, and see if you could stretch to more limited days 
or the same time every day, just to be something consistent for your customers as you're working through that. So whether that means that you're open every day from noon to five or noon to four, or you're open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, but longer hours, whatever that is, just to keep consistency and some normalcy for your customers at some level to, to be able to say rather than by chance um, that you're open. Um, but I certainly understand what you're going through from a people perspective, and I wish I could be there to uh, help with that. Um, you know, I still know how to ring a register. I still know how to wait on a customer. I still know how to help people, and that's uh, uh, in store. So I, uh, I, I certainly uh, enjoy doing that, and uh, when I have the opportunity, um, you know, sometimes people are amazed that I know how to you know, ring somebody up or, or do that. I mean, there's, there's lots of funny stories of where I've helped in, in, in store. Um, but, uh, you know, we are, we are there with you and I wish ultimately I was there to give you a hug tonight, Sylvia, because you are going to get to the other side. Uh, it is, you know, and you're going to go through that and we're going to go through, we're all going to work through that, Sylvia. We're all going to work through that. And just, you know, I mean, I had one staff member, you know, it's funny. She's having, she has to get tested for her other job. She works in a, in a nursing home. And so they test every four weeks, six weeks. So she got tested on Tuesday or Wednesday. She's having a colonoscopy on Monday and she had to get tested for that. But they couldn't use the test that was, Tuesday, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday. It had to be within 72 hours. So she had to go get tested again. I get it. I get it. It, it, it is, you know, you're, we're all doing our best to keep uh, everybody safe. But, but this hug's for you, Sylvia. This hug is for you. Uh, you need a contingency plan. It is... It is but you need, but every business ha has it in some form where they're running on a shoestring. So, you know, you have to adapt each, each COVID plan for a business has to be adaptable to the, to the team that you have available to you. And we're all running with limited teams. We are, I mean, there's just no, no two ways about it. We're all running with limited teams. And so, you know, what we know that, you know, should we ever have, should we run into the outbreak and, and it's certainly possible that all of us do it. One of the things we may, or even if your store doesn't run into it, because one of the prime, hang on a second, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this question. I'm going to come back to the COVID contingency plan because we're, we're getting deep here and I haven't done the good morning, good night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we do this program. It's how we kick this program off, and I don't want to forget that. So let's get going. Let's see where we're at tonight. Uh, I can't do that one. That's too complicated. <laughs> good morning. Our good morning tonight is on page uh, 94. We're going to page 94 if you're following along in the book. Good morning. In your corner, even in the roundest of rooms, even on your side, even if it makes this seesaw kind of boring. That is our good morning tonight. Okay. Let's go back to our COVID takeover tonight. Okay. So COVID contingency plans. So what do we do? One of the questions I've gotten a lot lately, okay, and I, and I honestly forget, I, I may be having sundowners or something. Um, I honestly forget whether we've had this discussion. Okay, so one of the questions I've gotten a lot is, okay, what do we do if there's another government shutdown? Okay, if the government forces you to shut down, what do you do? And from everything that I am getting, okay, from all the conversations I have had with local and state and leaders, and they're the ones really making that decision, okay, there is unlikely to be another government shutdown. But that doesn't mean you won't be shut down. And here's what I mean by that. 
Do you remember what it was like in March? Think back with me. Go in the way back machine. The way back. Way back. Way. Oop, hang on a second. I'm tripping off on the dog's fan. The way back machine. Okay, if you go in the way back machine and you go back to March, okay, go back to March before you closed, before you were forced to be closed. Do you remember what it was like for business before you were forced to close? Do you remember the trickle of customers, the area, you know, when it was really, it was weird, but still be open? That was being closed before you had to be closed, okay? That was your customer saying they didn't feel safe to be out based on what, uh... <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. Thank you. Okay. That was, that was being closed before you knew you had to be closed. Okay, that was your customers, your customers saying, hey, based on what's happening in the world, in our world, in our world right here, we don't feel safe being out. That's the kind of shutdown you're gonna have. You're not going to have a government mandated shutdown, but you're going to have a shutdown. We, you're, you could have a local shutdown Think like your um, school system has a huge outbreak. If your school system has a huge outbreak, everybody's going to stay home, okay? It's going to be that kind of shutdown. If your Zoom classroom has a huge outbreak, you're going to be shut down, okay? It's going to be that kind of shutdown, but it won't be government ordered. Um, there, there's a real... Um, Acknowledgement, I guess, would be maybe the right word. Maybe the right word by acknowledgement of government, okay, that they should not do another mandated shutdown, okay? Wholesale shut everything down. Um, that, that there is a real general belief about that. But there's also the belief that if things are bad enough in a community, a community will essentially shut you down even when you're not. So what does that mean? What is our contingency plan for that? Ah! Whoa, the martini spilled. Martini spill! There wasn't much left. Um, a new set issues. Sorry, we're getting used to the new set. I, I, I put the uh, martini glass on the wrong spot on the new set, and it tipped. Um, you know, so there, there's a belief around that uh, in, in controlling uh, spread moving forward in areas uh, because there is a belief, uh, there, there's a huge issue with rights and, and just everything um, with that. So if you had that kind of shutdown where your community shut down, where you weren't legally obligated to shut down, but your community shut down, what would you do? Would you do more lives? Okay, maybe that's part of your path. Would you reduce your, your hours or the days that you're open? Is that part of your path? That's part of our path. Okay, that is one of the contingency plans that we've thrown out there is that, okay, if we had to, we would reduce our operating days. Um, we're going to continue processing to the web. Okay, because we're going to, because the web, the nice thing about the web and live sales, quite honestly, is it takes you out of your community. So yes, you're hitting your core customer with that and having that available to them, but if your core customer doesn't feel safe, okay, isn't coming out, isn't sure about ordering, isn't sure whether they're gonna have a job, um, you know, then you need to work on somebody in an area, you need to be able to reach people that are and whether that's somebody in California or Illinois or um, Texas or wherever that is, um, you need to be aware, you need to be able to reach them. So our, part of our goal is to be able to continue, even if people aren't out in our stores, is to be able to continue processing inventory, which as you know, we, we tend to run a backlog um, of inventory that hasn't been processed yet because of the way we accept inventory, but to run that and process that and get it to our website. That's part of our contingency plan. 
So again, if your store is shut down, not government mandated, okay, but you don't have people coming in because they don't feel safe. Again, the simplest example is schools in session, even hybrid, and they and it shuts down because of a huge spike in the virus in your area. Okay, and that makes people stay home. So think about that a little bit and and so plan you know have in the back of your mind anyways even if you don't put it down on paper have in the back of your mind a contingency plan of that sort so that you you are you you can pivot again this is all about it's not just about being resilient it's about being willing to shift to move to bob to elbow elbow things to get to where we want to go okay this is about moving forward and how we move forward, okay? Um, even when we have to step back, how we keep on moving forward, okay? One step back, two steps forward, people. One step back, should that happen in your area? It's going to be very localized um, as we work through this. And, uh, but we will work through it. So that, that's the other side of this that you have to keep in mind is, is whatever is thrown at us, okay? And you people have shown it for 200 plus days, 200 days, okay? You have shown great resiliency, great ability to adapt, and great ability to continue moving forward, and you will continue to do that. I have faith in you. I do, I do. So that is a good thing. Um, I guess the other, uh, yeah, it is a zigzag. It's like what you have to do to avoid the alligators biting at your heels is what I'm told. Okay. I've never been in a race with an alligator, but I've told if you're, if, uh, an alligator is after you zigzag, zig, bot, zag, weave, bob. Uh, you know, we can all be taking lessons from uh, Muhammad Ali. You know, we can do it though. We are adaptable, okay? We aren't curled up in a corner, okay? No matter what adversity has been thrown our way, we rise. Frogger, I love it. Yes, Frogger's a great example. Oh my God. Uh, I, I actually, we had a Frogger game in the store the other day. That's perfect, Kitty. That's perfect. Frogger, Frogger is, uh, is a perfect example, okay, of, of getting through this and leaping across it. We can do this. You can do this. You all can do it, okay? I see we're all the people that weren't invited to the wedding tonight. I'm just saying. No, 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 no. No throwing stones at Zach and everything. You know, we're, we're the ones that aren't crashing the wedding tonight. Zach and Rachel's wedding, big wedding tonight. And then the honeymoon in the northern peninsula of Michigan. In the northern peninsula. I guess they can still travel there. Um, and tomorrow, they are big Taco Bell people. Tomorrow, Zach is anyways. Tomorrow is National Taco Day, I'm just saying, in case you need preparation. Um... In government news, uh... <laughs> oh, Sylvia, you got another life in you. Replay. Hit that replay button. You can do it. You can do it, Sylvia. You can. Um, you can do it. Um, In other government news, besides that the president has COVID, uh, they are still talking. The president has tweeted out today, let's get another relief bill done. He has, he has tweeted that out from uh, Walter Reed today. You know, get these negotiations done. Uh, make a deal, people. Make a deal. And... Uh, so uh, I am hopeful there, there has been, you know, the information I am getting is that they are talking and trying to move forward, you know, somewhere between the one and a half and the 2.2 trillion, which really deals with length of time on a lot of the issues and, uh, and things, you know, how long benefits are available and such as part of the next bill, which really yields to the total price tag. 
as well as a few language issues in the bill. But I am optimistic, I am optimistic that uh, with the uh, president running behind it, Mitch McConnell spoke about it for the first time publicly in the last, let's call it 12 hours, maybe 24 hours, about the bill and its possibilities. So you have some Senate movement, even with the Senate trying to adjourn because of their own COVID issues in the Senate. The fact that they're all still talking is a good thing. So, um, hopeful. I like, to, I like to err on the side of hope. And speaking of hope, do you know what tomorrow is, people? Do you know what tomorrow is? Hang on a second, I'm finding it. Well, it is National Taco Day. Thank you, Peanut Calorie. It is. Well, hey, you know, just because I said it doesn't make somebody remember it, but... My peanut gallery remembers that tomorrow is National Taco Day. They, my, my peanut gallery <laughs> remembers the important thing. But, hey, tomorrow is Self-Care Sunday. That's the day you take time for you. You take time for you. Well, not my peanut gallery is not going to because they've got to take time to cover our store tomorrow. But, in general, you take time for you. And they'll take time for themselves late in the day, maybe with a taco. Um... But Self-Care Sunday is the day we have set aside in this since the be, uh, early on in this. We started the Resale Strong Cookbook. The Resale Strong Cookbook has been going strong for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Okay? Where we have been baking and doing all sorts of different things. And this week, on um, Dallas Stationery, Nart's Dallas Stationery, we have the recipe for pumpkin bread. Pumpkin bread is this week's recipe of the week. The recipe of the week is pumpkin bread. Okay. And uh, it is good. It, I have heard wonderful things. We are in pumpkin season. But, you know, the fact that it was written on Dallas Nart Stationery, courtesy of Forms Plus, our friends at Forms Plus, um, that it's got dribbles and drabs on it. You know, that's the sign of a good recipe, a recipe that's got dribbles and drabs on it. So pumpkin bread, people, is the recipe of the week. That should be up within the half hour, I think, on Nart's.org, Nart's private Facebook group. But it'll be over to Nart's.org slash Resale Strong by noon tomorrow for the Resale Strong cookbook. But over on narch.org slash resale strong, you know what? That's where you get all these videos. That's where we collect them all. They're all easily accessible there for you. So you can follow them along, catch the replay, because not everybody can catch it live. Some people are at a wedding tonight. Just say it. Some people are at a wedding tonight in an 1816 house in Illinois, wherever that is. Okay? There is a wedding going on right now. Um... And none of us are there. None of us are there. But people that are there are watching the replay. Are watching the replay. And that's awesome. And we are truly thrilled for Zach and Rachel. Truly thrilled. We wish Zach would get back to work. But hey, you know, I digress. But everything's over there at narts.org slash retail strong. So you can catch the replay. Um... It's also there so you can share it with everybody you know, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, whoever you know. We're going to help them get to the other side of this. We help them by with these videos and all the resources we post there. Narts.org slash resale strong. That's where you go. I am here every night in the Narts private Facebook group live, live at more 8 than ish. Live for 200 nights at more 8 than ish. You'll find me here. If you have a question or your friend, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker has a question. The airlines who are going through their issues have a question. I haven't helped an airline yet, have I? I haven't helped an airline yet. But I'm not afraid of helping an airline. I'm happy to help an airline. You just reach out to me. You email me. Neil, N-E-I-L at ecistores.com. N-E-I-L at ecistores.com is where you find me. 
uh, we start this program every night, every night, with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start it. In case you were not here at the beginning of the program, our good night tonight, our good morning tonight was on page 94. Good morning. In your corner, even in the roundest of rooms, on your side, even if that makes this seesaw kind of boring. Our good night tonight is good night, holding your hand, even if it's sticky from jelly or honey, on your team, yes I am, even when you're playing solitaire. Oops, hang on a second, I closed the book before I showed you the graphic. But uh, hey, I opened right back up to it. There's our graphic today, look at that seesaw. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Neil Abramson. I do like a good party, a wedding like one that's happening tonight. Tonight in Illinois, in an 1816 place, or there's an 1816 building on the property. Um... A wedding, a bar mitzvah, any kind of party. We will party again. I will be there with you in person. And then I can fist elbow you, fist bump you, hug you. We'll be doing it again in person before you know it. And I will be there with you. Tomorrow on Self Care Sunday with Pumpkin Bread, I'll be back here, folks. I, yes, I will. With uh, the uh, pumpkin, the great pumpkin. But until tomorrow, know that you, and you, and yes, Sylvia, I'm talking to you tonight. You're not alone running this store. I'll see you tomorrow night, everybody. Have a great night. It's time for dessert.